Hello everyone and welcome to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. Uh, this episode is kind of a short little special about making a particular item and in this episode it's going to be about making um, dish scrubbies to use in the kitchen. Uh, it's something I've never made before and I thought I would try it out. Uh, so this episode is just going to be about kind of how I made them and how they're holding up. Uh, I have been using them in the kitchen, so towards the end of the video I'll share with you um, how they've been working. So I spotted this yarn at Hobby Lobby. It's called Stitch Soak Scrub, and it's 100% nylon and it's worsted weight like this chain um chained yarn so it's not plied it's more of a chain structure and you know immediately what came to mind were dish scrubbies and i've never made dish scrubbies before I worked with a hundred percent nylon like in this form and I've known people who have, uh, and I just thought, you know what, let's give it a try because we've been using those uh, green, like Brillo pad style scrubbies in the kitchen, and they're great when they're fresh out of the package, but after you've been using them for a while, um, it's annoying that it leaves behind this green residue especially on the cutting boards. Uh, I have one white cutting board and <laughs> when I'm done cleaning it, it's covered in these greens, these fine particles, and it's just really annoying. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna give this a try. Uh, I'm gonna run a little experiment, a little comparison, uh, just to see how do handmade scrubbies hold up in comparison to uh, the store-bought ones that we've been using? Uh, sometimes we'll buy the um, scrubbies that also have a sponge on the other side, so it's kind of like this two-in-one thing. Um, other times we'll just buy the, the scrubby part separate from the sponge. Uh, so I made some dish scrubbies, which is what I mostly want to talk about in this video, but I also um, knit some dish cloths out of 100% cotton yarn as well. Kind of this idea of instead of using a sponge and a store-bought, you know, scrubbing pad, what if I used 100% cotton dish cloths and the 100% nylon dish scrubbies? So, um, yeah, so I made a few scrubbies and uh, I used different patterns, two different patterns. Uh, one of them I made using a knitting pattern and one of them I made using a crochet pattern. And just to kind of test like which one is easier to make, which one um, seems to hold up longer, you know, are there any differences at all? Are they pretty much the same and it comes out in the wash? Haha, <laughs> yeah, pun intended. So I started with the knitting pattern and I've seen these before. Uh, my great grandmother, who I actually inherited a bunch of circular needles from, she would, I could tell after making this, like, oh, this is the pattern she used or something really similar that she used to make um, little scrubbies in her kitchen, but it wasn't made out of this yarn. It was made out of cotton, I think. Uh, but I recognized the structure right away and went, oh, okay, yeah, 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 let me make one of these. And so it's knit back and forth in rows, which is very simple. Uh, although I did find that on my metal needles, the... <laughs> 100% nylon yarn was extremely slippy um, and I don't have wooden needles 
but I don't have wooden needles now that I think about it I don't have any so I only have metal knitting needles which is totally fine except uh, this was very annoying to work with the combination the pattern was easy to follow uh, the structure is okay uh, but I did find it annoying it was just annoying <laughs> Uh, so, so you end up with this like curved S shaped thing when you're finished and then you have to do some sewing, some seaming to join it together. So you take this like S shaped thing and you kind of, uh, join it into a tube and then you need to, uh, take the ends and kind of cinch them in. And so you end up getting this um, double thick round scrubby, which is great. Uh, and it turned out to be uh, about the size of my palm, which is an okay size, maybe a little bit smaller. Um, it seemed smaller than what I wanted. So if I was going to make another one of these, I would... Um, increase the row length so I could get something a little bit bigger. Uh, so I made one following the knitting pattern. But then I also made a crochet one because the yarn, I thought, I thought it'd be easier with the knitting because all the live stitches would be on the needle and they'd be really easy to see. But like I said, it was very slippy. Uh, and so I thought, well, let's just go ahead and try the crochet. And I thought it would be really difficult to see the stitches of where to put my crochet hook. Uh, but I thought, let's try it and let's just see if it's too difficult for me to read where my stitches are. Then I'll just rip it out and I'll just make all knitted ones. Well, it turns out the crochet was actually a lot easier. Um, I also have metal crochet hooks. And the yarn being slippy wasn't a problem with the crochet. Uh, it was a very smooth crochet for me. Uh, I found the stitches very easy to read. Um, you know, I used a, uh, I think it's like a size I crochet hook. It's a decent size. So we're not talking about really small stitches to have to worry about. Um, I'm crocheting it at a worsted weight gauge. So it was very easy. So it still uh, turned out to be a double sided, uh, you know, two layers thick scrubby. So both of them were like that. Uh, with the crochet, um, <clears throat> the stitches themselves were easier to work with, but also you crochet two separate round discs and then attach them together. But I did not do it with a seaming sewing method. Instead, I just single crocheted around the outside to join the two layers together. And that was very simple to do, very easy to do. Uh, and so I much prefer the crochet version as far as the making side because it was, I thought it was a lot easier. So in the end, I made one knitted uh, dish scrubby and I made three crochet dish scrubbies um, and they were very easy to churn out. The knitted one is smaller than the crochet ones uh, and it did use less yarn, but I'm okay with that. I mean, <laughs> after making these four dish scrubbies, I still had uh, yarn left over. Uh, so out of one ball of the yarn, I could get uh, a sizable amount of dish scrubbies. Uh, and I think that'll be the next step is to see how many dish scrubbies can I get out of one ball to kind of also look at the affordability of this compared to um, the store-bought scrubbing pads. Uh, but I did, uh, have the dish scrubbies in the kitchen for several months, a couple months, not several, just a couple, <laughs> and we tested them out. So we used them to scrub our cast iron pans. We, 
uh, mostly cook with our cast iron pans and we do uh, need to clean them from time to time. I know um, if you're a cast iron pan user, you're either someone who regularly washes it with soap and water or you're someone who doesn't, uh, who's got one that's seasoned really well and it stands up great. We kind of do both. Um, one of our cast iron pans is much newer than the other one, so it's not as seasoned, but this isn't a cast iron pan video, so I'll <laughs> skip all of that. Uh, but we tested it out on, you know, uh, cooking sheets and um, silverware, uh, like forks where the cheese has been stuck on there. And uh, I said, use it and abuse it and test it out. So. Uh, Michael and I have been doing that, so uh, we've used the the knitted, one of the knitted and one of the crocheted, and testing them out in the kitchen. Uh, we also put them through a wash in the washing machine, uh, because <laughs> that would be a huge perk if we didn't have to throw these away as often as the store-bought scrubbing pads. So they've also made a trip through the washing machine and, and the dryer. They did actually go through the dryer. So I would like to show you how they've held up after a couple months of use and a wash. So I will start with the knitted one, which is now a donut. Yes, um, the, so it's still maintaining its tube structure of the first seam, although, um, I'm not sure how much longer it's going to hang on to that. It seems to be coming apart. Uh, but this, uh, center pull, you know, cinching it in to get the circle, it was that last seam. This came apart within one week of use. And we've still been using it because it's like, well, let's just see, uh, you know, if it maintains its structure since then. And I mean, for the most part, it's still together. You can still see the row, the garter rows of the knitting. Um, it still scrubs things just fine. Um, after a wash, it did get the uh, grimy, foodie bits out of it. Uh, it has survived a wash and a dry. See, you can still see the stitch structure. Um, but I will not be making any more knit scrubbies. Uh, as you can tell, uh, I mean, scrubbing a pan this way with a big old hole in the middle is not, uh, is not good. And even just folding it over, you still have to hold it to keep it together to get the two layers. So does it function? Yes. Is it the most, um, optimal? No. And then there's the crochet one. Which is holding up beautifully. Um, it is a little bit uh, wonky and warped after the wash and the dry. And I think some of that has to do with the tension I had with the single crochet around the outside. If I'd done it a little bit more loosely maybe it wouldn't be puckering in like this. Uh, you can also see the center hole here is expanding a little bit. So I think, I can't remember, because this was so long ago, but uh, I, I might have it on a video. I can't remember if I did the, the magic loop center or if I did a regular chain and then slip stitch with the beginning chain but I'm gonna say the magic the magic center 
I, I wouldn't recommend for the dish scrubbies because after all of that friction and use, and if you wash it and dry it, it's just going to loosen up with all of that movement. Uh, but again, it went through the wash, it went through the dry. You can still see the stitches, those double crochets really clearly. Backside as well. It's still all held together. Uh, there are no strands that are, there are no loops that are sticking out and pulling out. So the crochet one held up a lot better than the knitted one. So it was easier to make and it held up better. So this is definitely the way to go. Also, big plus side that we can wash these. And I don't think I even need to put them in the dryer, but they did end up going through the dryer because it was part of the experiment. <laughs> and yeah, we just washed them with a load of towels from the kitchen and everything came out clean and beautiful and it's ready to use again. So, I mean, I don't know how long of a life this is going to live, but it's already served us for two months in the kitchen. It looks almost like brand new. So, uh, yeah, I think I have been converted, at least for this year, <laughs> into using this kind of scrubby instead of a store-bought one. So if you've been on the fence about making your own scrubbies for your kitchen or as gifts to share, I hope that this video has been helpful to you. Uh, I have to say these projects worked up so quickly. You could easily whip out a, a few of these in an afternoon and toss them in with gift baskets or stocking stuffers or what have you. Uh, it's also something you might want to consider if you're thinking about reducing your impact on our planet and reducing the amount of waste. Um, these are things you can wash and reuse and they seem to be holding up really well in my kitchen. Uh, it's something I would encourage you to try in your own kitchen. Put it up to the test. How does it handle? Uh, I had a lot of fun with this project and I can't wait to make more. Thanks for joining me for this special episode and thanks for bearing with me and my nasally voice. I'm still fighting off a head cold and I have um, stuffy sinuses. So uh, thanks for sticking with me and I hope to see you next time. Uh, stay safe, be well, and enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Bye.